You know, I think we've all been in the situation where we see a game and we have to play it just because it happens to be based on something we really like. And I am no exception. This has happened to me numerous times, and it's sort of a hit or miss situation whether or not that game's going to be good. This one's more of a miss. See, one of my favorite movies of all time is Home Alone, so naturally when I was younger, I liked to play the Genesis game that was based on the movie. There were multiple different versions of the Home Alone video game, and the Genesis version is a little bit more unique than the others. That doesn't mean it's good. It's really bad. I, I reviewed it before, a very long time ago, some of you may remember, but that was one of my first reviews, so it wasn't very good. So let's try this again, and hope that I don't fail this time. How about that? Sound good? Great. Now, in complete and total fairness to this game, in all honesty, it's a lot more faithful to the original movie than a lot of the other Home Alone games. Basically, the idea is that you're Kevin, and you have to defend your house against, you know, Harry and Marv, with, you know, cleverly placed traps. I mean, that, that, that's what the movie was really about. I mean, no, despite, besides the whole Christmas and family sort of, you know, happy vibes, you know, it was, the comedy part was, you know, Kevin setting the traps and stopping Harry and Marv from stealing his family's stuff. That, that was it. The difference here is that, well, there are a few. For one, Kevin's not just defending his house. You, as Kevin, have to defend the whole frickin' neighborhood from Harry and Marv, which is something that wasn't the case in the movie. I can kinda see why they did this, on the basis that it wouldn't be much of a game if you were only defending one house the whole time. Except for the fact that the traps really aren't expanded here. And that's my first real problem. The traps are, in a word, awful. Some of them are based on things you find in the movie, like the blowtorch or the tar, but most of them, well for one, all but the torch, are things you place on the ground that Harry and Marv either slip on or get stuck to. And that's literally all you would put on the floor. The only other thing is the torch, which, you know, where they walk through a doorway and the torch, you know, blasts them with fire. That was in the movie. And so was the tar, and the toys, and I think that's literally the only ones. Oh, and the ice. So sorry, I forgot about that one. But that's it. And just, there's just no creativity when it comes to the traps. There were a lot of different, more, more creative traps in the movie, so I don't really understand why they wouldn't have made that a part of the game. I think it would have been a lot more interesting if you actually spent time before Harry and Marv get there looking for pieces and parts to put together to make these traps. And I know what you're going to say. Well, Darkness, maybe they didn't have the processing power back then to do a game like that. I mean, it wasn't the Sega Genesis. That is bullshit. And I know it's bullshit because a big part of the game is creating different weapons for Kevin to use by finding things around the neighborhood and putting them together, which is exactly what I wish they would have done with the traps. See, here's my big problem problem with the traps, not only can you not make your own, but you only get a certain amount of traps to use in the game, and I think they add two additional types of traps in the hard mode, or expert mode I believe it's called, and that's it. You can't actually get any more. I think you have three traps apiece for each one, and that's all you have. You can't, you cannot find any more traps. You can't in increase your inventory of traps at all, as far as I can tell. The w real damage is going to come from creating different weapons from stuff you find around. And like I said, I wish they would have done this with the traps. It would have made for a more interesting game that would have been more faithful to the movie. I mean, I can see that they were trying to make the game a bit faithful to the movie here. It definitely does a better job than a lot of the other Home Alone games, okay, but it still fails in this department. Look, Home Alone was about Kevin setting traps in his house to stop Harry and Marv. If you don't really expand the traps at all, you're not going to have much of a Home Alone game. Now, in all fairness, the making of the weapons is a little bit more creative. Some of the weapons are really weird, and by really weird, I mean really weird. But overall, it's good. I mean, there's a pretty decent variety here, but my real problem with this is that in the movie, Kevin only used one weapon. He used a BB gun, which is your default in the game, and you have to find more ammo for it. The, all the other weapons you can make are, are in no way related to the movie. They're all stuff the developers just made up, like the snowball launcher, or the hot coal gun, or the glue gun, or the super ball gun thing. I don't understand this one at all. This is, this is one of the weird ones. Anyway, 
But the fact is, the weapons weren't a big part of the movie, so why wouldn't you just take what you did with the weapons in this game and turn it into creating traps for the houses? That would have been more interesting and actually would have accelerated to the point where I'd say the game would be decent. But because of this and what I'm about to get to, the game really isn't. Now let's talk about the graphics of the sound before I move on to anything else. The graphics aren't really that great. I mean, if you look at it, it looks alright, but there are some flaws in the shading and the character animations are pretty choppy to say the least. I'm not really impressed with the graphics. I mean, they're decent, but they're not, they're not, they're not really that good. The sound is another mixed bag. The music, honestly, I was kind of impressed with. A lot of those musical tracks are not only good, but some of them actually sound like mu music you'd hear in the movie. So I'd say that's pretty decent. Uh, but the sound effects, like with the weapons, just sound stock and a bit lackluster. But overall, I guess the graphics and the sound are at passable levels, that's about all you could say. Where the game really falters is the gameplay. I already went over how the traps and lack of the ability to get more or make your own is just stupid. But the actual game in itself is just insanely dull, and it's just not fun to play. That's really its problem. See, the thing is, for one, with a limited number of traps, you have to conserve which traps you're putting into each house. The whole idea of the game is to kick Harry and Marv out of each house before they get all the loot by upping the pain meter. If you notice, there are three meters in the top right corner. One is for ammunition, one is for loot, and one is for pain. The idea is to fill the pain meter before the loot meter gets bigger, and of course the ammo keeps track of how much ammo you have in each of your weapons. The problem with the fact that the traps are so limited is that most of the pain isn't going to come from the traps. In fact, a very small amount of pain is coming from these traps, because the traps don't even cause the pain meter to go up all that much. Most of the pain you're causing is from these weapons, and really that's the point of the game, is to find items and build weapons so you can fight off Harry and Marv yourself. This is just silly to me. The whole point in Home Alone was that Kevin was running away from Harry and Marv the whole time. He planned the traps in his house in a certain order so that he'd always run back behind the next trap so Harry and Marv would run into it. That was his entire plan. And then he would run to the house and then call the police. That's what he did. And it worked. For the most part. But instead, instead, in this game, what you end up doing is literally running towards Harry and Marv to shoot them in the face repeatedly with whatever weird weapon you happen to make. It's completely contradictory of what, of what Kevin did in the movie, and it's just bizarre. Now, in fairness, it's impossible to die in this game, because every time Harry and Marv catch you, regardless of how much pain you cause them, they always just hang you on the wall and leave you there. Then you rock the D-pad back and forth and mash the buttons to get off the wall and go shoot them again. They don't even take your weapons away. So there's really no penalty for getting caught except that you're up on the wall for a little bit. And you can, you can get off the wall in about five seconds or so as long as you mash the buttons. So what's the fucking point, I ask of you? The neighborhood houses are also really weird. One of them is based off Kevin's house, and I like that one, it's alright. It's a bit bland, but it's Kevin's house, you can tell. The problem is that the other houses are just bizarre. One's a, col one's a colonial house that's haunted, another one is this olden time house, another one is a super futuristic house with a guard robot, don't ask me where that's coming from, and another one is a house that's literally falling apart, and I question if anyone even lives there, so I don't understand why Harry and Marv are even robbing the place. It's just a weird neighborhood, honestly. I guess they got a little bit creative with the house designs, and that's fine, but some of them really confuse me. For one, the ghost in the haunted house can electrocute you, which is really weird to me. And the futuristic house has this guard robot that's apparently the worst guard robot in the known universe, because it will only, only attack those that are immediately in front of it, and if this house is so futuristic, why isn't it automatically rigged to call the police when someone enters? I don't understand why that wouldn't be a feature, considering current houses that aren't ultra-futuristic ultra have this feature if you have a security system. So, what the hell? The neighborhood overworld is also bizarre to me. Not because it looks bad, I mean, I guess it looks fine, but there are two things about it that weird me out. Number one, you can find items under snowmen, and that's just bizarre already to me. You can find hot coals, glue, tires underneath the these things. Who is stashing this stuff under these random snowmen that are all over the neighborhood? Who does that? Who puts hot coals underneath a snowman in a neighborhood? And, you know, how the fuck do the coals stay hot is my question. 
But, you know, whatever. Maybe the older, it's cold charcoal that Kevin set on fire or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's a video game. I guess I shouldn't bitch too much. But then on top of that, you have the fact that Kevin doesn't walk around the neighborhood. He slides around on his sled. This would make sense um, if gravity wasn't a thing. See, I, I don't know whether any of you have ever ridden a sled or understand the physics of sled riding, but typically, in order to move forward on a sled, you have to move downhill. And I've tried using a sled over asphalt, it, unless the asphalt is literally covered in a sheet of ice, um, it doesn't work too well, but it doesn't stop Kevin. Kevin does whatever he damn well pleases on his sled, you just move around. Now, one might say they did the sled thing as sort of inspiration to the movie when Kevin rode his sled down the stairs and outside. Now, I would buy that if I didn't honestly think that the reason they did the sled thing was so the animators wouldn't have to make a wa another walking animation for Kevin because they're fucking lazy. That is what I honestly think right now, because that's what it looks like to me, because it makes no damn sense. Should I bitch that much? No, the controls work fine, you can get from house to house just fine, but it's just dumb. And it makes no sense, so what's the point? Again, what's the point? I don't understand why you're defending the whole neighborhood. I wish they would have expanded the traps more and let you really map out Kevin's house and actually, accurately defend it in accordance with a certain order. I mean, I think that would have been a neat concept, but instead they sort of had this platform thing that kinda has traps and has this real emphasis on building weapons to shoot Harry and Marv. And, you know, honestly, and this is kind of sad to say, of all the Home Alone games I've played, this is probably the best one. A lot of the other ones tried to be actual platformers, and they were just weird. And I think that's the best w w way to describe them. Weird. They made no sense, and it didn't even feel like you were playing a Home Alone game. At least with this, I can see the references, and I can see the inspiration taken from the film, so I can't say that the game is god-awful, but it's really not good. Not good at all. It's honestly bad. It's just not as bad as basically every other Home Alone game ever made, ever. It's kind of sad, too, because I think if there was more emphasis on the traps, maybe only one house, and a few of the changes to controls and if the graphics maybe were a little bit better, the game would have been actually pretty decent, especially for a movie game. But because of these minor errors and silly decisions and things that make no sense, it's just not a good game. And the best part about the whole thing is the ending, where well, the game criticizes you for not getting all the houses. And if you do get all the houses, the game encourages you to try to play the game on expert mode. And if you manage to do that and get Dave all the houses in expert mode, you get nothing. Literally nothing. There's two cop cars on the ending, and the game developers basically thank you for playing and beating expert mode. And that's it. That's not an ending. That's, oh, thank you for playing our really terrible game. Yeah, thanks a lot. By the way, I don't have any footage of that because I don't feel like doing it again, but I have seen that ending. You don't want to get that ending. It's depressing. This is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.